All right, so welcome to the Monaco Grand Prix. Let's go ahead and head to the streets of Monte Carlo, Monaco. I qualified 15th for this race, which is just enough to get the money from Opaque, the sponsor, one of the sponsors that I have. And qualifying is just so close here at Monaco. Only a few thousand separate some of the spots. But yeah, I did pretty good. I feel like the car is really good too. Just that sometimes the car just gets really upset over the bumps. I mean, I need a couple more chassis upgrades to keep the car more stable over the bumps. But either way, I got 20 laps around Monaco. Alright. So yeah, time to take on the legendary street circuit. A proper road race and in the true meaning of the word that was how mr monaco the late great graham hill once described this iconic event the cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century but still we race on those same public roads beside the mediterranean sea there's no victory more coveted than that of the monaco grand prix the prestigious circuit de monaco then it's not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago it's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start and this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Leclerc, Max Verstappen, and Sainz, Norris, Ricardo, Ocon, and George Russell, Stroll, Gasly, Sebastian Vettel, and Sonoda, Bird, Raikkonen, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Guan Yu Zhou, Delatrad, Mick Schumacher, Latifi, and Nikita Mazepin. And with preparations almost complete, Let's head down to the track. All right. Yeah, this is a strategy I want to start. I definitely want to lighten the load on the fuel. I know that. Yeah, it's good. Right there. All right. I might want to add in some slightly more extra fuel. That's good enough. All right, let's go ahead and begin the Monaco Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go in Monaco. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a lot of power. I couldn't get around Seb there. So I sneak up under under Lance under Lance Stroll. Yeah, nowhere to go there. <laughs> yeah, it's trying to be careful not to bump into anybody, but again it just gets so it's really tight at the Grand Station Hairpin, or Grand Hotel Hairpin, as it's now called.
is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead. Oh my goodness, got in the gas way too hard there. <laughs> it's really hard when you're following these guys so closely. I'm trying to be careful not to uh, hit them. But also, when I'm behind another car, a car loses downforce, so I have to be really careful. Because of the, it's all that dirty air that I'm in. There's been an incident on track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. Sun, sun's really getting in my eyes here. But it's not in the game, the sun in real life. You're losing a small amount of time to the car behind. Keep pushing. So I'm trying to be careful, you know, just the end, you know.
Hey, you're in the top ten. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. gonna change strategies I'm sticking to the original plan I'm alright. That was barely a scratch. I can definitely tell the tires are starting to give up a little bit. We're leading our teammate by 9.1 seconds.
approaching the pit window, you'll be on the softs. now we're boxing this lap gap to teammate behind is 15.0 seconds Louis is coming in for a stop dive into the pits now so Checo's got the lead go, go now. all right good stop guys really good stop very good stop Pit strategy okay gotta stay on the luck gotta, gotta stay to the okay all right, move up into P6. Good, good, really good pit strategy there. Now that I got the softer tire, it should be quicker than the guys in front of me. Yeah, that's what I mean. Monaco pit strategy, pit strategy is everything here in Monaco. So, and I know the guys in front of me are probably going to be a lot slower than, than. I know I got more grip in the car, but I know these guys are going to be really difficult to pass. I know that for sure. Ah, darn it. I actually clipped the wall there. I usually hate having to redo this stuff, but it's a video game anyway, so. And plus, it's my stream, so I can do whatever I want.
coming through, Max. Uh, trying to stay off of him, but... And I could not get around him. Trying to get around him going through the hairpins. I had a really good run coming out of Mirabeau there. But again, you know, just can't get the can't get the drive off the corners. Besides, I'm going up against the front runner cars here, so it's gonna be really hard to kind of capitalize on even with the additional grip, it's gonna be dang hard passing these guys. car just had to weight shifted too fast there and it cost me yeah being behind max is really hurting the tires There's four laps of fuel remaining Battles out of the race. We're leading our teammate by 17.4 seconds. Like I said, Monaco, it's near impossible to pass at this track. And I hit the pretty much picked the wrong place to do the flashback. Two laps of fuel left. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. I think I'll get P6. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi.
the one that everyone wants to win, and they've only gone and done it. What a fantastic result here at Monaco. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. The points that Sergio Perez earned today see him take over the lead in the Drivers' Championship. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Bird. They fought so hard and had incredible pace at times, so I don't think anyone else did a better job today. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull pulled further ahead in the standings. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. If we move up in the driver's standing and move ahead of Alpine, which is really good. Only five points behind Alphatari, so that's really good. Definitely a great day for the team. I was just hoping that maybe the fans uh, really seem to enjoy that. It made it look easy. Um, we all underestimated you, didn't we? Do you think you were lucky not to end your race with that crash? Um. Yeah, I'm not gonna answer that. Because that's really none of your business. Meanwhile, team headquarters. Something new or old? But yeah, if um but yeah, I was gonna say if um King Louis would have been able to hold up those guys a little bit longer, I probably could have gotten by Hamilton for or Botas there for third. Yeah, that would have been pretty good getting a podium, especially starting way back in fifteenth. All right. See, I definitely want to upgrade the chassis. I know that for sure. Um, let's see. But yeah, I'll definitely do uh, do that for Louis, and then I'll do the strategy. Okay, I think that'll do nicely. All right. So I think I should have some enough money to upgrade the build time. And I'll do I'll do that for the uh, chassis. All right, let's see what upgrades, uh, more upgrades I can do. Yeah, I got the turbo upgrades. So that's really good. Um, just thinking about upgrading the uh, definitely would want to upgrade more of the chassis I know that for sure um, I'll put more I'll get a new get the plank for the, get an upgraded plank and then um, for arrow I don't know if I can do more arrow sign um, but see if I can upgrade that one. Alright. See, it seems like I can't do any more upgrades, which is okay. But yeah, I definitely need to keep upgrading the car. I know that for sure. And I'm going to want to go to a new power unit for Azerbaijan, because Azerbaijan is a power track. So I'll put all new components in the car for Azerbaijan. 
Because Azerbaijan, as you know, is a power track and and for practice, yeah, gearbox is all good. Because I gotta run one more race with the gearbox before I can change it. All right, let's go ahead and advance the clock. Our new parts are completed without issue. They'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend. All right. So now, yeah, I got yeah, the plank still in development. I don't think I'm going to get any new upgrades right now. But I do know that upgrading the build time is something I definitely want to upgrade. All right. So yeah. Um, So yeah, the next episode will be the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.